1 Corinthians. For I received from the Lord what I made it unto you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and after he had given thanks, broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also the chalice, after supper, saying, This chalice is a new covenant of my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this chalice, you are proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Today is a major feast day in the church. It's the feast of the archangels, Michael, Gabriel, and Raphael. So as we come to pray, the Mass is being offered for John and Ruth Haber. So as we come to pray, let us call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you are the way, the truth, and the life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you give us the angels to protect us. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God, God in the highest and in the honor of the people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you. Your name and your promise. When I called, you answered me. 
You built up strength within me. All the kings of the earth shall give thanks to you, O Lord, when they hear the words of your mouth, and they shall sing of the ways of the Lord. Great is the glory of the Lord. I will sing your praise, O Lord. Please stand. Hallelujah. said to him, Here is the true charge of Israel. There is no duplicity in him. Nathanael said to him, How do you know me? Jesus answered and said to him, Before Philip called you, I saw you under the fig tree. Nathanael answered him, Rabbi, you are the Son of God, you are the King of Israel. Jesus answered and said to him, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You shall see greater things than this. And he said to him, Amen, amen, I say to you, you will see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I have to confess that I'm no expert on angels and how the heavens open and you can see the angels uh, in heaven, but it's nice to know they're there. And the angels are divided into two categories. You have the angels and the archangels. And we all have the guardian angel. Each one of us is assigned a guardian angel, which we need. I definitely need a guardian angel to keep me out of trouble. But uh, the, the archangels, uh, the three we're celebrating today, Michael. Michael is the patron saint of the Navy. And uh, Michael is famous for defending us in battle, especially against the evil one. So we need protection. Um, Gabriel. We're familiar with Gabriel probably best because of the Annunciation and, and, and uh, appearing to Zachariah and to Mary. And uh, Gabriel is the messenger, the messenger of God. Uh, and, and then the other one is Raphael. And Raphael is more famous in the Old Testament with uh, Tobit, uh, and he's the healer and the driver out of demons. And uh, uh, so the uh, uh, archangels, the three today, are very biblical. And uh, today we thank God that we have our guardian angels and we have the angels to lead us, protect us, to heal us, and certainly to give us the message that Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior, the Son of God. Amen. Amen. Please stand as we profess our faith. Our sorry, prayers of faith. Um, Gail Zimmerman is at death's door. We pray for her family as she goes through to heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. We pray for all the recently deceased. May God grant them eternal rest and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. Many people battling cancer, COVID. We lift up all our sick. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. We pray for the continued success of our new church. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. And we pray for our quads. We pray that all the people in the quads will be faithful to their weekly meetings, and especially when they finish the quads, that they will start new ones and have discipleship multiplication. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. Thanksgiving to God for all the people who watch our daily Mass, and also for the many people who attend in person. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. We lift up in prayer all those who have no one to pray for, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to war and violence, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the million people who die of hunger this month, may we be generous and be good stewards of all God's blessings, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the people trying to pick up the pieces in Louisiana after the recent hurricane, May we reach out to them in generosity with help and support. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, we thank you for this day. We ask your blessing on us.
through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for to your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for to your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the grace and glory of his name, for our good and for the all of the soul. We offer you a sacrifice of praise, O Lord, humbly entreating that as these gifts are borne by the ministry of angels into the presence of your majesty, so you may receive them favorably and make them profitable for our salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, and to praise you without end in your archangels and angels for the honor we pay the angelic creatures in whom you delight redounds to your own surpassing glory. And by their great dignity and splendor, you show how infinitely great you are to be exalted above all things through Christ our Lord. Amen. Through him the multitude of angels extols your majesty, and we are united with him in exultant adoration, and we with one voice praise you without end. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of us, and St. Ignatius of Antioch, ordained by St. Peter, a disciple of John in the year 110, was condemned to death, and on his way to Rome, he wrote seven letters to the churches, and he wrote beautiful things about the Eucharist. He said, Take care then to use one Eucharist, so that whatever you do, you do according to God. For there is one flesh, our Lord Jesus Christ. For there is one cup in the union of his blood, one altar, as there is one bishop with the priests. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race, and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love, and when his words for his disciples are now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father, most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, it entered willingly into his passion. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. My Lord, my In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for me for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. My Lord, my the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the death of the Lord until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom we led to his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, 
We proclaim the work of your love until he comes again. And we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the past and sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us. And granted by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Bring your church, our Lord, to perfect faith and charity, together with Francis our Pope, Louis our Bishop, with all bishop, priests, and deacons, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Open our eyes to the needs of our brothers and sisters, inspiring us words and actions to comfort those who labor and are burdened. Make us serve them truly after the example of Christ and at his command. And may your church stand as a living witness to truth and freedom, to peace and justice, that all people may be raised up to a new hope. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place, and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, with the archangels, Michael, Gabriel, Raphael, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ who said to your apostles peace I leave you my peace I give you look not on our sins but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Peace, Christ, peace, 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 Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. May the body and blood of Christ keep us here for eternal life. Amen. My Jesus. I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Having been nourished with the heavenly bread, we beseech you humbly, O Lord, that drawing from it new strength, under the faithful protection of your angels, we may advance boldly along the way of salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for prayer. two parts. One, I, I learned a lot as I reflected through this book 
And two, there's something really struck me uh, about today's reading. The book of Daniel was composed during the bitter persecution <clears throat> carried on by Antiochus Epiphanes about 164 before uh, Jesus. And it was written to strengthen and comfort the Jewish people in their ordeal. They were being really persecuted, which is very uh, common as what we've been reading. The, <clears throat> the book of Daniel was, takes its name not from the author, but from a hero, Daniel and his three companions. And it was written about uh, five, it was written at a time of 538 BC. And it was a distinctive type of literature known as apocalyptic, which a lot of prophets used between 200 BC and through 100 to sort of showcase the coming of Jesus, the vision, the Son of Man. And as a side note, <clears throat> I found it quite interesting that it's really referred to, the book of uh, Daniel's referred to as a sister of the book of Revelation. And when I began reflecting, I was hoping I would never have to talk about reflection. <laughs> and then I find out book of Daniel, so uh, here I am. <laughs> so what makes Daniel different from the other books is built around a series of five dreams. And one of the dreams is what happens when the end of the world comes. It's the most vivid, the most vivid and specific dream in all the Old Testament. What struck me most about the reading is that first verse. And it was around what the depiction of God was. And it was very rare in the Bible where someone went and depicted, here's what God looks like. And in this passage, the God of Israel appears as the ancient one, a figure clothed in brilliant white who has hair as pure as wool and thrones of fiery fire. Before and after this ver these verses, they were depicting, the writers were depicting what the gods that people were worshiping at the time had lots of wings or heads and monsters. And it was trying to depict ancient gods versus our God and the difference. And I thought that was really good of the writers to talk about how righteous and how committed God was to their people. So it made me think of my vision of God. To be honest, I wondered what do I think God looked like? I wondered what visions others have of God. So I decided to go to a couple of experts who without question would tell me the way it is. <clears throat> so I spoke to three of my granddaughters. <laughs> <clears throat> Sophia, who is four, Isabella, eight, and Lydia, 10. The purity of God's children just blew me away. Because think about it, when we think about what does God look like, do you think about George Burns in that old movie, Oh God? It took me a while to get that out of my mind. But as adults, we try to make it sound like we want to, we want it to sound good. We want to look good how we describe it. And who are we fool? Luckily, God knows us that we're just adults and we let things get in the way. So, as you would imagine, I did not get surprised talking to my grandchildren because sometimes they may not tell you what you want to hear, but they'll all to always tell you what it is. So I asked Isabella what her image of God is. It didn't take long and she said, <clears throat> God has a big white beard and white robe and sits in a very big chair. And I then asked, well, what does God's face look like? And she said, well, everyone. And I said, wow. I don't know that I could have ever thought that. I mean, that's exactly what we would want it to look like, everyone. 
It just, it, it, it uh, melted my heart. I then asked Lydia, my 10 year old, and I asked her and she said, well, God is the shiniest angel of them all in heaven. And it was just, and she smiled when she said it, it just, and so I asked my four year old and I understood that even though she's going to preschool at a Catholic church, she's just getting out of her twos now that she's four. <laughs> and she runs the household. And I said, Sophia, what does God look like? She looked at me and said, he's as bright as the sun. He's like the sun who shines down on all of us. And I'm thinking, that's my granddaughter. <laughs> But those depictions of God is what we should all have the same feeling of what God is for us. What the author of the book was saying over 2,200 years ago is just as appropriate or more today. God is loving and caring. God is unlike the demons, false gods, etc. that work hard to derail us. God is our biggest fan and wants to support us in every aspect of our lives. Regardless of how we visualize God, it is most important <clears throat> that we have a loving relationship with Him. I must finally shout out that one very good way to do this is become a member of a quad. <laughs> I have said before, it has been one of the most influential things in my life. I thank God for leading me to this parish family and to be a member of this parish quad discipleship. And finally, as Deacon Norm said yesterday during his homily, we are all on our personal journey to Jerusalem and working real hard to have eternal life in the kingdom of God. What better way than to have a personal relationship with God? Amen. Amen. Very good, Carlton. I love the lay of reflections because in order to give the reflections, you have to study and you have great insight and you study it well. And you cannot understand the book of Revelation unless you understand the book of Daniel. And it's a, it's a great message of hope if you understand it. And uh, very, very beautiful. Got a cute uh, email here. After the service, a little boy told the pastor, when I grow up, I'm going to give you some money. Well, thank you, the pastor replied, but why? Because my daddy says, you're one of the poorest preachers he's ever heard. <laughs> the Lord be with you. <laughs> and may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorify the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Let us pray the prayer to the Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, fill our hearts with faith. Hallelujah.